a $383.1 billion budget that charts the way for economic recovery and outlines plans to sustain growth was announced by Dr. Ashni Singh, Senior Minister in the Office of the President with responsibility of finance. This year's budget, one of the objectives of this budget is to ensure a diversified and resilient productive sector as the government's transformative agenda unfolds. Thank you for joining us for another program of Budget in Focus. I'm your host, Travis Bruce, and today I'm joined by the Honorable Minister of Public Service, Sonia Parag. Thank you so much for being here with us, Minister. Good afternoon, Travis. It's a pleasure, and good afternoon to the, your viewers. Thank you. So, Minister, as we get right into it this afternoon, uh, in President Ali's speech to the 12th Parliament, he really stressed the importance of accountability. And uh, one of those measures or one of those initiatives that he wants to create is one where we can have our revenues and expenditures being gazetted so that people know exactly all the transactions that are happening and they're in the know of what is happening with government and with the money that is yeah. for them. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on that initiative and how do you see yourself playing a critical role in pushing that agenda? Well, Travis, you know, the, the PPPC administration would have campaigned heavily on accountability and transparency. And given what we've experienced in the last five years and to date we are still getting uh, information of the lack of accountability and transparency that would have transpired throughout the five years and it's horrendous it's horrendous what's coming out in the public is horrendous now we campaigned heavily on that and as President Ali said we plan to keep that promise to be accountable and to be held accountable uh, to the public now how do I plan to push that agenda where public servants are concerned and the spending within my ministry, I plan to hold my employees accountable for every dollar that is spent. Mm -hmm. besides, that, besides that, we have to develop code of conduct, code of ethics. When you have professionality or you will have a professionalism, you will have transparency. You will have that accountability. So by transforming my own uh, ministry and not my ministry, but generally what governs or what rules the public service in terms of the code of ethics, code of conduct. I think that is that will heavily contribute to holding persons accountable or public officers ac accountable yeah, thank for you. their actions. Thank you for that, Minister. Yeah. Well, $383.1 billion. It's the largest budget uh, that we've yes. ever seen in this country. Definitely. But how do you see yourself playing that role of implementation, really, of the budget? through your ministry? Well, let's start, Travis, with my budget. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as I'm informed, the, the, this is the largest budget for the Ministry of Public Service, and we've been allocated three billion and, well, pending the passing of the budget, of course. Yes. Um, but it's three billion and somewhere around $52 million. That's the biggest budget or largest budget that the Ministry of Public Service has seen. Now, in terms of what we will do with this. This is going to transform the entire public sector because one billion out of that three billion and fifty two million dollars is allocated specifically for the awarding of the initiative of the twenty thousand online scholarships. Now in twenty twenty one we plan to award four thousand five hundred online scholarships. Those are fully online scholarships to Guyanese. And this wasn't done, we just plucked that out of the air. The manifesto was crafted in such a way that you listen to the persons on the ground. You know that there is a need for certain technical skill sets that does not exist. So based on that needs assessment, this idea was born. And so the $1 billion allocated uh, will transform the public sector. You will see the transformation in the uh, skill set that we will be providing for the areas that are priority relevant that are most needed to function. Yeah, Minister, you mentioned yeah. uh, on that note of scholarships, what are some of the scholarships that uh, persons, Guyanese, young people especially can capitalize on? And are there also provisions for persons who are living with disabilities to access these scholarships also? Well, yes, disability comes as a matter of fact, we, uh, that's another manifesto promise mm -hmm. that we will include persons with disability not only at the level of attaining a higher education but providing jobs yeah. and let them 
let them be able to earn an income, have a normal life, so to speak. Um, what, 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 that is, what that means for us is that we would like to, and yes, grant persons with disability or they will be included in these 4,500 persons. And you're looking at courses or programs like a degree in nursing. And as we have seen over the pandemic, this is something that is needed. necessary, needed. We are looking at education, which is a big deal, having our teachers trained at a different level. So those are just some to begin with. But again, these will give these particular groups of persons a skill set, a training that they cannot attain otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so true. And you know, one of the things also that the manifesto speaks to is the implementation of that new management practices, the performance-based uh, new practices. Yes. How has it been? I know this started under the emergency budget, but I know it will continue this year. So how has it been thus far? What feedback you would have received and how it would have impacted the public servants? Well, Travis, let, let, me, let, me, let me say this. It, is, was, it was my idea to implement this right away. Yeah. However, I thought it best and myself and a team from the Attorney General's Chambers and very soon the relevant stakeholders will be included in that discussion. Okay. But we want to implement that as a section in the revised public service rules, performance management system. Yeah. So it's no longer a guide or a practice. It's a rule. Mm -hmm. You will be held accountable. You, there are consequences to the breaches, breach of, of any of those rules. And performance management system is what? It's not simply when somebody's coming to renew a contract or asking for a promotion that you automatically just produce a document giving an evaluation or an analysis of that person's performance. This is something that is continuous year round. You may not know when it's coming or they may have specific periods within which we will do an evaluation coming out of that assessment. But I believe that it will, we will see an improvement in performance in the public service. Yeah, and we have seen a difference now with persons in the public service okay. taking a deeper interest in the way that they present themselves, in the way that they represent whatever ministries. Yes. So how has that implementation been so far in terms of, you know, training and capacity building within the sector have you had like weighed the options more or less so that you know these are the stronger points that we need to focus on yes. and this is where this money will be spent to yes. allow for that's a great question mm -hmm. so my budget or the ministry's budget has been increased in terms of training okay. this year and i'm very happy because that enables us now to redesign revamp give our, our, our training programs an overhaul to accommodate those deficient areas in the public service, right? So we have pinpointed a few, mm -hmm. um, uh, and that, that has been not just in our ministry, but you, it's across the board. And based on that, we are planning. And, and that's also a consultative process. It's not just you will be handing down an instruction. Mm -hmm. It has to work for everyone. So. Yeah, and I know also there was a lot of speculation around the closing of that public service college. Yeah. But I know the government has a plan not to completely get rid of that curriculum, but incorporate it into what your agenda is. And it is ensuring that each public servant is at a place where they're comfortable, where they have a better quality of life, right. and it benefits us all as Guyanese. So could you tell me perhaps about some of those training mechanisms that would have been implemented so far uh, that is really pushing, well, pushed by this But this is, this is what mm -hmm. it is, Travis. The Bertram Collins College, this was not being used in what was being perceived to do, or what was being thrown out there to the public. What was actually happening is that 60 persons were being trained to enter into a clerk three position. Mm -hmm. Now you start the public service with a clerk two position. So you're jumping a clerk two, but in reality, the clerk two has to turn back and teach and give that experience and train that person again, and they're earning less. So clearly that is not fair, it's unfair. So from that standpoint, the other standpoint is that there were operations at the college that nobody could enter to know if in one building 
what was there were high tech equipment and all of those things. Nobody knew what was happening. Mm -hmm. So they, they and then quite frankly, the vice president said it the other day in his interview. It was being used as a base for campaigning during the 2020 elections for the APNU AFC. Now, the intention of whatever this college was being, being uh, or the public was being led to believe was not so at all. The Bertram Collins, now, a name is indispensable. A name is indispensable. Mm -hmm. It is the meaning behind what you intend to do. That was not accomplishing what they were telling the public they wanted to do. So what we are doing here, then you have to also look at the fact that for umpteen years, we've had a training division in the Ministry of Public Service. That was not done away with in the last five years. That training division there is for persons who are coming into the public service, progressing in the public service, and it's for your developmental training. Yeah. It, there is an induction course that allows for persons who are entering the public service to get a, a full-blown idea of what is necessary, what they need to do. That is a training for every day, their everyday job. So why supersede that? Why jump over that? Why go and spend all of this $80 million refurbishing one building, $8 to $7 million on, per year on contracted employees, when you have the very same thing within the public service? Yeah. So clearly that was not. Now, in terms of what is, being, what is happening there, national training is what we're looking at. National training needs. And that is what the 20,000 online scholarship is geared to do. Mm. It doesn't take away from what the Ministry of Public Service would usually budget for their scholarships or awarding of other scholarships. But it is taking care of a national needs assessment. Yeah. And that is what the restructuring of that will be. Yeah, well said. Okay. Uh, and I like that um, because it means that money saved in one area is money earned that can be used to Definitely. Put into Who wouldn't want to save in mm -hmm. one area where you can? Yeah. These are taxpayers' dollars that are spent at the end of the day. And no person out there who's paying taxes wants to know that their money is being squandered. Yeah. Nobody. It doesn't make them feel, it, does, it makes them feel violated, exploited. So, you know, doubling back to the scholarships, I know it's really a collaborative effort, not only between your ministry, yeah. but the Ministry of Education. Right. Do you foresee any challenges, perhaps, in terms of, because we know internet access is not available across right. the length and breadth of Ghana, there are some shortcomings, but what provisions, perhaps, the ministry will be willing to make uh, for the 20,000 online scholarships there? Well, I'll tell you what, Ministry of Education, this 20,000 online scholarship is the manifesto promise that has to be fulfilled by the Ministry of Education and will be fulfilled yeah. based on their academic rule mm -hmm. in such. So eligibility, everything for those persons will be coming from the Ministry of Education. The awarding of the scholarship through the scholarship process, interviews, etc., would be conducted by the Ministry of Public Service. Connectivity between the two we are working collaboratively to get that, to have that easy access between us. Now, connectivity, as the president would have said in his inaugural speech, we plan to have internet access in areas never heard of before. Not only that, but improve connectivity in areas that we do have, connectivity in areas that we do have internet access, because the reality is we face problems with the internet access, we do. But that is something that is being, um, that is budgeted for, that will be improved. So I do not foresee much challenges with the connectivity or persons being able to access this, the 20,000 online scholarships with ease. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And you know, uh, there is a lot of concern right now, a lot of contention, a lot of questions are being asked about specifically an increase for public servants. You care to shed some light on that? Um, absolutely. I, you know, the concern is coming from a place that is political to me. Mm -hmm. And there might be some genuine concern as well. But let me reassure public servants that there is an increase, there will be an increase in 2021 for all public servants. Let me just, that it is a fact that the line, line item 601-421 caters for an increase in salary. Yeah. Right? 
Now the vice president would have, in, uh, on social media, I believe, uh, two days ago, said that $10, uh, $10 billion was allocated on the line item 6214, the one which was previously known as revision of wages and salaries, now known as employment costs. And that a uh, huge sum of that, a huge portion of that, will be going towards increases in salaries. Now, there is no need for concern. Making an announcement for an increase in salary and a percentage in an increase in salary is contrary to collective bargaining. It's not the norm, right? You take away the right of collective bargaining if you do that. So you cannot be contra contradictory and want a percentage in there and you're taking away the right of collective bargaining under which you have an agreement to do. Right, so, yeah. Minister, uh, let's touch a bit upon, upon the hinterland region. Yes. Uh, are there any plans to incorporate or perhaps I know with the growing economy right now, we are going to see expansion, we are going to see more companies, even private uh, right. companies coming in. But is there any plans for training for persons in those areas to perhaps even join the force in the public service? In coming out from the hinterland and going into different, like the disciplinary force and yeah, so on. Definitely. Uh, yes, definitely. Yeah. Definitely the 20,000 online scholarships. And even, even so, uh, the Ministry of Public Service, again, still has that training or will provide scholarships as the need arises or as the, the, uh, a, a full survey will show the assessment being done in the public service as to what is necessary, what is priority, what is relevant, right? And so that will be included. And I'm so happy that you brought up Hinterland because I, have defi I definitely think and from what I've seen, the Hinterland was left behind. Yeah. You know, in 2019, I can tell you that one person or zero person in Region 8 is granted a scholarship. Eight persons in Region 2. Thousands of people in Region 2 and you had eight persons. And I'm happy to say that this year we have moved beyond 300% increase in those areas. Mm -hmm. And hinterland especially. We do not want to leave our hinterland persons or indigenous people, Amerindians, whatever you want to interchange them and call them. I do not want to leave them behind. Everybody must have an equal opportunity, and that's the point. The president spoke on unity. He spoke on, on, on oneness, the oneness initiative or com commission that will, be, um, that will be established and headed by the prime minister. And you, can all, you, you would have seen on Saturday that that all, was already put into motion by, yeah. the, by the corridor. Corridor of unity. Right, corridor of unity. And this is something that, again, we campaigned on. And this is something that I think every member of, of the government feels that there should be unity and there must be unity and we must do our part in bringing that together. Yeah. Well, yeah. when we think holistically about the budget 2021, like what are your views? What, what do you think about this budget? I know it is the largest that we've seen, right. but how do you really think Guyana is moving towards that brighter, more prosperous future under this administration? I can tell you one thing, the budget definitely is looking to making Guyana economically viable. And that in itself is where the progress, where we will see Guyana rising up. You know, so I think, I think the initiatives that were brought forward in the budget and the things that they wanted, and then you have to look at the fact that we had so many stakeholders being consulted prior to the budget. You had the private sector, you had the other political parties being consulted. Everybody had a bite of the cherry. Everybody had their part said. And you would have seen the reviews that this is a budget that was welcomed. And for so many reasons, not only the economic viability, but so many aspects of our li daily life. Now look at, the, look at the measures, the additional measures that were, that were announced. This is the zero-rated VAT on food items and uh, household items. This is a big deal. This yeah. is a big deal. And this is something I want to say, as being the Minister of Public Service, that public servants will benefit. You will see a decrease in cost of living as, you, as your salary comes in. You don't have to pay. You have the 5% uh, water tariff across the board. That will make life easier. 
not having to pay VAT on your food items will make life easier. On household items such as pillows and, and all of these things, you know. And, and, and these are things that we go, sometimes we, look, we go in a store, we look at it, we want it, it's nice, we can't afford it. But now you will. Yeah. And this is how you have to look at it. The benefits of everyday life is so much. And you will gain so much. The average man will gain so much. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal. Yeah. It's a big deal. Minister, I know you have so many plans for the ministry, uh, but besides the scholarships and, you know, linking everyone with equal opportunities, what else can we expect from your ministry this year under the allocation that you would have received? Well, right now we are looking at the turnaround time for processing documents, for getting things done. Mm -hmm. That is something that, and you would be surprised to know, Travis, that the departments are not computerized. Mm -hmm. They don't have data that is entered that you can easily access, easily make reference to. So those are simple changes that we're going to make that is going to make the turnaround time and make the regions happier or the ministries happier, what, whichever agency comes under the public sector happier. You know, so they make the public, because again, the name public service is service to the public. Yeah. You know, we're implementing things whereby uh, public officers will be held accountable if they are rude to, to, to the public, if they are discourteous, if they are, you know, they, they do not want to attend to people. So those are, th those are things that I believe will transform the public. So it's not an overnight, it's not an overnight situation. Mm -hmm. It's a start and we are going to uh, work laboriously to get that done. Yeah, and I like how you brought it right back to accountability, <laughs> the president's vision for the government. Yes. So that is one of the pillars that you will execute your Definitely. job in. As we're coming down to program time, Minister, is there any uh, final comments you'd like to leave with our listeners and our viewers, perhaps what they need to know, what is coming from the public service ministry? Well, these are, these are basically some of the things, but in terms of training, you know, Travis uh, and scholarships, we, the initiative is not only to just bring out a tertiary education and to just bring out something that is necessary. We're reaching out to those groups, those groups that cannot afford it. So when you're looking back in, in from 2015 to 2020 and you see um, Simona Brooms, for example, both her children were granted scholarship. You see the former minister uh, of education, Nicolette Henry, you see the former minister, Tabitha Sarabuhali, all of them granted. Now, you're in an office. You're in an office to serve the people. The people should come first. So, you know, that help should be given to, and this is what we want to do. This is what we want to do. We want to reach to all of those areas and offer those persons that cannot otherwise, who would have the dream to fill these, these, these spots and cannot otherwise do it, and we're doing it for them. Thank you yeah. so much, Minister. So, I want to tell the country that the budget is something that has been implemented to lift that weight off their shoulders, to unburden them. And this is only the start. This is only the start. In the five years, you will see the transformation of Guyana starting with this budget. Thank you so much You're for welcome. that. Thank you for being here and sharing with us what your ministry's plans are for Budget 2021, uh, what you will be executing throughout the year and yes. for the future. Thank you, Travis. And that's all the time that we have for today's edition of Budget in Focus. Thank you for joining and listening right here.